This is a cheapo DIY head tracker, costing less than $10. It's an awesome addition to any simulation gamer setup. Forget about using your mouse to look around in Armor or War Thunder. This thing tracks your motion in six axes, allowing you to physically control camera movement, giving you way more immersion in your games. So let's look at how to make it right after this. Malduino is the Arduino based bad USB. Inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper. With the Elite version, simply store and select between up to 16 different scripts on a micro SD card. To find out more, see the link in the video description. I was pretty surprised when I came across this to find out just how many games this is compatible with. The list is really rather expansive. There are actual products that do the same thing as what I'm gonna show you here today, though they can get pretty pricey. So making one for $10 is a real no brainer. So how does this actually work? Well, it uses three infrared LEDs attached to one side of your headset and an IR camera. That's it pretty much. The camera ignores visible light and instead only picks up the infrared light given off by the LEDs. By doing some quick maths, software can work out which way you're pointing, where you are in 3D space, just based off of the LEDs positioning. Then this information is translated into in-game camera movements. So in order to make this, you will need three SFH485P infrared LEDs. You can find them on eBay. I'll have some links down below. Next, a five ohm resistor, which I don't actually end up using here, though you really should. I'll, I'll talk more about that later. You'll also need some wire, a PS3 i camera, and you'll also need a floppy disk. Additionally, you will need a frame on which to put your LEDs. I have a 3D printer, so I'll be using that here. If you want to print the same one as me, I'll leave those files down below. Though you could use a piece of cardboard, bend some strong wire into shape. Pretty much anything will do, as long as you end up with something that resembles this configuration. Don't worry about the exact measurements for now, we can adjust those later. So obviously our LEDs need powering. There are two options here. Firstly, you could battery power them, which results in a much more elegant solution. However, in this video, I'll be powering the LEDs via USB, just because it's easiest. These LEDs are rated for 1.5 volts each. So to use a USB port's 5 volt supply, you need to put them in series, like so, with a 5 ohm resistor somewhere in the circuit. I couldn't find the 5 ohm resistor, so I'll be skipping that and overpowering the LEDs somewhat. However, if you want to use this often, then do make sure to use a resistor, as the LEDs won't last as long if you do upper voltage them. So then just go ahead and solder everything together. I suggest using a really thin wire, as it means you won't have to worry about cable management nearly as much. Also, something to note, on my LEDs, the longer leg actually represents the negative terminal, something I discovered half an hour into wondering why the darn things weren't working. Also, if you don't have a soldering iron, not to worry. These jumper wires exist, such that you can just connect up with the LEDs though the end product won't look nearly as nice and it may fall apart over time. Once done, you should have something that resembles this, just a few LEDs daisy chained together, though you should have a resistor in there somewhere, though as I mentioned, I don't. After which, just attach the LEDs onto your structure by means of hot glue, tape, just whatever you have to hand really. One LED per arm is good. Then you'll be left with two ends of wire coming off your structure, your positive and negative. For this step, you will need a sacrificial USB cable, any cable will do, as long as it has a USB mail connector on one end. So, splice your cable. You'll find there's four wires inside. It's the black and red wires we care about here, so ignore the other two and just expose the black and red. Next up, solder the red wire to positive and your black to your negative. After which, I would recommend isolating those two wires with electrical tape, as to avoid uh, bad things. All that's left to do here is plug it into your PC and hope you haven't screwed up the wiring enough to blow up your USB port. Of course, you won't be able to see the LEDs because they're infrared. However, your phone's front-facing camera probably can. So to test everything is working, just have a look through your phone's camera. If there's light, then everything's good. Lastly, just attach your LED clip thing onto the side of your headset. I just use tape, though Velcro or cable ties would be perfect here. In hindsight, best attach the clip to the left side of your headset. That way you won't have a wire coming off each side of your head. LEDs done with, the next port of call is the PlayStation Eye Camera. There are a few modifications we're going to have to do here. So head on over to eBay and pick up a PlayStation Eye Camera. I got mine second hand for just, I think it was three, four pounds. However, it gets slightly tricky here. So there's two types of camera. Both types have an IR filter, which we want to remove and replace with a visible light filter. Though one type has a removable IR filter, the other has its IR filter sandwiched in between the two lenses and so just isn't removable. With the non-removable one, you get pretty faint light from your LEDs, so it's not as great. However, both types will work, though the one with the removable filter is better. 
You can tell which is which via the front lens. Perhaps ask the eBay seller for a close-up picture if you can't tell whether it's a good one or a bad one. Though do note, I ended up with a bad one here, which is the one I'm going to be working with, and it works absolutely fine. Just not as great as the good one, or so I'm told. Whichever PSI camera you ended up going with, you're going to need to open it up. There are screws hidden under rubber thingies on the back. After you've got through those, you're going to need to pry the back casing off. This takes some doing and you might mangle the plastic just a little like I did, though eventually it does pop off. Next, there's some more screws, after which the whole PCB will just come out, leaving the lens behind in the housing. At this point, if you ended up with a better camera, there is an extra step you're going to need to do. Since I don't have that camera, I can't show you how to remove the IR filter, but I'll leave a link down in the description to a video that shows you how to do just that. Though remember, only do that step if you ended up with the better camera. Next is where that floppy disk comes in handy. You'll need to do this for both types of camera, mind you. You see, floppy disks have visible light blocking properties, so we're going to want to open up our floppy disk and find the actual floppy part, and cut a piece off it, and stick it right here in the lens housing. Just cut a bit down to size so it fits nice and snug. Next, just reverse the whole taking apart the camera process, i.e. put it back together, and then just find a decent place to put your camera, and the hardware side of things is pretty much done. Right, so of course we need to get drivers for that PlayStation camera. In this case, we're going to be using CLI. I'll link their site down in the description. There are free versions of the driver available, though they sell copies for only $2.99 each, so since it's so cheap and we're saving quite a lot of money here, I decided to just pay the $2.99 and support the development. Though, like I said, there are free versions available of CLI if you want to search for them. Once that's done, all that's left to download and install is OpenTrack. I'll link it below. This is what actually does all of the tracking. Once you've opened OpenTrack, you'll need to put your headset on and plug it in. Then tap on the hammer icon to the side point tracker and select PSI camera, then tap start. Tap on that hammer icon again and slide the threshold to the left only till the three LEDs from your headset are showing. There shouldn't be a need to mess with any of the other settings really. Next, click model and input your clip measurements if you made your own, after which tap calibrate and move your head around randomly for a bit, though try to only pitch in your. Then close that, go to options and select bind center. Here just put in any key combinations. This will make it real easy to reset the camera to the center position in case the clip moves or anything when you're playing. And then everything is completely done, finally. Many games will work without further configuration, however, you might have to check up on individual games. Here I'm playing War Thunder, the recording came out a little zoomed in for some reason, however it really worked great. There was basically no lag as far as I could tell. After a while of playing, you kind of forget you're even wearing the thing and just start moving your head to look around instinctively without really thinking about it. You can further configure it for sensitivity and such, but that's up to you. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, it took a hell of a long time to make, so do slap that like button if you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and now I'm actually starting Snapchat, so do add me on there to get a behind-the-scenes sneak peek of what's coming up next week and just what I'm doing in general. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more hacking videos.